So this is a demo of uh, some tips about ADF. Um, specifically, we start with a simple Java class. Um, it's just a class that has two methods. One is reading a file, the other one is writing a file. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn it into a data control so we can use ADF binding to bind it to a JSF page. So all you need to do is go find the class, right click on it, and say create data control. When you do that, ADF basically understands the structure of the class and creates a data control based on this class. And you can see now the two methods in here with the appropriate parameters and return values um, when there are return values. Next, we're going to create a JSF page. So on the JSF page, we're going to use both methods. We'll take the first one, which reads a file, drag and drop it over as a parameter form and this will automatically create a page with an input text component for the parameter, which is the name of the file, and a button to invoke the method. Now to return the results, we're going to drag and drop the results over here, and we'll drop it as an output text component, like that. Then we're going to take the write file um, function and do pretty much the same thing, just drag it after this one drop it as a parameter form. Now we have two parameters and there's no results, so we're done basically at this stage. We can save everything and run. So when the page comes up, we can simply specify the um, name of the file. Here's the file. Here's the content. And then we can write something else into the file, like moo moo. Oh, sorry, we first need the file name, so to.txt and new new and we can write to the file. And the file indeed says new new. So the functionality works. Now let's look at a couple of improvements in the page that we might want to do. So what we actually want to do is read the file, um, but we want to be able to edit the results. So basically we want to merge this output text into this input text. Right? Then there's no point in having um, then the file, the name of the file twice on the page. So we want to um, basically have one field where we input the file name and it will communicate with both methods. So there's a couple of things that we'll do here. First, let's merge the file names. Um, that's actually quite easy if you understand what's going on in the binding tab page. You have two file names, file name 1 and file name 2. And you can see them over here as well. If you actually expand it, I'm oh, sorry, um, there are also two um, executable, right? Read file and write file. They have parameters in here. And if you look at the parameters for the read file, can see that we have a reference to the binding object for the read file file name. And we can just copy this one and replace the existing reference here, which is to another binding, to the write file binding, to be the same one. So we just paste it over. So now we have the same um, binding object used for both read and write. Then we can go back into the page. Okay, so we're going back to our page into the visual editor, and now we can remove the second file name, like that. The second part is a little bit more tricky, and this is where we want to merge this output text into this input text. In order to do it, we're going to actually bind um, this, um, we're going to override what's going to happen when someone presses the read file button. Okay. So to do that, we're double-clicking the button. And this offers to create a new backing bin for us. So we'll create a new one. We'll call it the backing for untitled one. Can use the same name here. Put it in some package and click OK. And then we'll create the method or the action for 
Now, the developer inserted the ADF text that actually needed in order to execute the read file operation. What we want to do after we read the file is take the value from the output text and put it into the input text. Right. So, in order to do that, we need to have, in addition to the operation binding, we need to have um, a control binding. So, we'll do import, Oracle binding, control binding. Right. And then, in here, we're going to add a little bit more code. So, control binding, we'll call it file data. That's the data that we're getting. Equals bindings dot get control binding. Now we need to figure out the name of the binding. Again, if we go back to our JSPX page, and we'll actually look at the binding can see that the name of the binding is return. Okay. Let's just copy this value into our Java class. Like that. So now we have the data from this field, and we want to put it into the other field. In order to do that, we are going to again let JDeveloper do the hard work for us, and this field, we want to have a representation in our backing bin. We are just going to say binding in here. Click the little arrow to create the binding in our new backing bin. It's a new binding, and that's the results. Okay. Now that we have this item, can just go into our code and say this dot um, get result item dot get value to the value in the file data like that. So this sets the value back into the page. Okay. Now we can run the page just to make sure that everything works. Okay, so first we read the file. Then we can modify it and write the file. If we read the file again, the new value is here. Cool. So now what we can actually do is remove this item, right? Because we don't need it anymore. Let's go back to our page and I'll show you one more trick to know about JDeveloper. The problem that I'm going to have is that if I remove this item, I'm going to lose the binding that I'm using. Right? So there's a binding for this item, which is the return. Right? And if I click here and I do delete, sorry, like that, delete, and I go to my binding, the return is gone, and then my code is going to mess up when I'm trying to read the value. So, I better not do it this way. Okay. Go back here and undo the change. But, there's another trick that you can do, and this is to remove the item directly from the source. So, this is the actual output text, and you can see the binding here. And if I actually remove it from the source like that, and save, and then I go to the binding, the binding is still here. So now, if I save everything and run my page for the last time, right. so let's see the text. Okay, change it and write it back into the file. Now, 